Does that matter? No one hears this part. Uh, it records live in three, two, one. Into the Nexus is a production of AMove.TV. Bookmark AMove TV for other great video games and esports podcasts. Into the Nexus is sponsored by listeners like you via patreon.com slash ITN. Greetings and welcome back, everyone. This is Into the Nexus, the podcast all about Heroes of the Storm. I'm Garrett Weinzerl, here as always with Kyle Ferguson. How are you How's doing? How's it going, man? I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. We had a... Uh, are you still bruised from yesterday? I'm still bruised from yesterday. Oh, we, goodness, we had a rough yes. stream. Oh, goodness, yes. We played, what, four games together and lost them all in ranked? It's been rough out there. We, we played three in ranked, lost them all, and then we, 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 were, we were like, yo, who wants to play a quick match with us? Who's in, the, who's in the chat that wants to play a quick match so we can hopefully maybe kind of get a win and end today on a high note? And we did. Well, I would like to give great congratulations to our lovely A-Move uh, Kyle live stream Twitch chatters for giving us our only victory yesterday. Yesterday. However, we then continued the spree today by going in with Varian Lee Ming and having a grand old time. Oh, uh, dude. Uh, could I do that every game from now on? Can I just pick Lee Ming and... Hey, everybody. I know there's more than one Garrett playing Heroes of the Storm. I get tweeted out a lot. Like, hey, was this you? And usually it isn't. But if you see a Garrett, see a Garrett on a team, that Garrett picks Lee Ming, please pick a Varian and go taunt. Just, you know what? Let's 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 not make this about me, Kyle. If you see someone <laughs> if you see someone pick Lee Ming, grab Varian and go taunt. You have yourself a good time. Maybe now, we even communicate. Yeah, but get in that little get in that chat room. Start click clackety clicking away and go, yo, Lee Ming. I'm going taunt. And you know what that means. And don't explain it beyond that. Because then you also have the cool factor. Mmm, mm, I get ya. It is a bit of work. I think we could refine it. You know, we, we need like a we need a, a checks and balances sort of system because I'm often going taunt, 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 and saying my target, but I don't know if you're on cooldown at the moment either. So we need like a taunt confirm, taunt confirm kind of system so we can really amplify this. And we are losing our games together in ranked, and we're just picking like two assassins. You go solo lane, I go assassin. We're not really synergizing because previously we just like played the best we could with what the best we had and it felt like enough but now there's stitches and junk rats so many junk rats oh my goodness so many junk rats yeah dude i went from like zero to I, I, we, we you could probably rewind a few episodes where the junk rat changes came in this was what this is almost two months ago now right the first round of junk rat changes feels that way Let's i think it, it wasn't the most recent patch it was it was at least two patches ago and and you and i were both saying uh boy i i hope <laughs> i hope that that junk ride doesn't become meta and it would appear we, he, he we we're we're in that reality now kyle may may 18th okay a little longer than i thought but whatever the case is yeah junk red is now meta and I'm just gonna say it. I, I, I freaking hate Junkrat. I don't like playing against him. Uh, I don't like him in my Heroes of the Storm. I went from not I'm, not like really recognizing his existence to I wouldn't mind if they just removed him from the game very very quickly this week. Mm -mm. I mean the the double trap thing is a real bother with the big ass and they're chasing you and they're yep. big and they're zoning you out and. The complete lack of counterplay in regards to those traps. You cannot interact with them. The idea in like an organized play is that somebody doesn't even step on them. That, that's too much. To spend an unstoppable on it, way too much of an effort. So what you do is you have somebody, usually your off laner or maybe a mobility assassin, kind of start inching them away from the area you'd like for them to be. And as they chase you and clatter after you, you find a place you're going to leave them in. 
Mm. Dude, that's just what I want in my action MOBA. That is exactly what I want. I want to play clean up your room before I get to good stuff. That's what I want. All MOBAs now should ask us, please pick up your toys before you team fight. I mean, it's, it's even like more of a like a sorcerer's apprentice sort of situation because you have to be like, mana, mana, and then get them to dance and follow you for an extended period of time. It, it is it is exhausting. But I also may have I may have forced this upon myself because this week I I decayed out of masters. I've I've been about I mean honestly to be perfectly honest, like Cassie is not bringing it home right now. I lost a lot of oomph with the sort of double hit to my damage. I was really reliant on Surge of Light to finish things out in a very particular way. And that win rate went down. I think I win a third of my games now instead of like 70% or something along those lines. There's a lot of, so, lot of, lot of CC going on and Cassia doesn't yes. tend to do well in that environment. Yes, that's the fascinating thing that sort of resulted out of that last balance patch. We moved from a almost Malganus Cassia kind of time period of very, very low CC. Uther nerfed again. People were moving away from it. Stitches, of course, has been reigning supreme, but that's not the big CC. Blaze came in. People were a little confused. Winner was down. He was being drafted as main tank, not winning a lot. Now he's definitely off lane. And that sort of performance, that delivery of CC has kind of brought us into this full-blown CC meta. And it's just awful for Cassia. So I'm back in Diamond right now. I've just been experimenting, and I landed on Mephisto main, because I really, really like it. However, I leave a spooky ghost behind, and that might be making me see more junk rats because there's a ghost, so let's put bombs and traps where he's going to be, where he will end up eventually. Gorge Stitches is a, is a counter because you can't teleport out of the tummy back to your ghost point, but you can also kite the stitches. So it's kind of like a Varian Tracer sort, sort of scenario with Varian's an amazing counter to mm -hmm. Tracers in mid-leagues because Tracers play into it. But a high-level Tracer can actually blink as the charge connects and dodge the initial taunt in the first place. So you actually counter Varian in some ways as Tracer. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a skill requirement there, but yeah, it's, it is a, a possibility. I need you to explain something to me. Okay. I don't know why this didn't occur to me yesterday when you were t you were regaling me with tales of your your new Mephisto manage. You you, you tell so far. Let me just let's run it back. You were playing Cassia. Went really well. You got to Masters. Yes. Mm -hmm. We end up in a CC heavy meta again, which gets you off of the Cassia. And so, as a result of that CC meta, you have switched to a hero that teleports but the entire enemy team knows where you're going to end up at the end of that teleport in a CC heavy meta. Well, sort of. There's some trickery, of course, because the idea being that you teleport out of a bush. And so oftentimes you will be out of lane in a very, very safe spot and then make those teleports and that sort of practice and project has been extremely positive for me. Because this is a time that would be very easy to get tilted. My main, that I was enjoying Masters with, playing with the big league, seeing lots and lots of CCL names, lots and lots of big streamers, got nerfed. And it's easy to be like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm done for this season. But I sort of took all that energy and put it on Mephisto. And going out of bushes, it's interesting. It's, it's fun. You know, Mephisto does have a calamity of sorts. You know, you may not know this. It's very, very small. But his Shade of Mephisto actually deals damage where you teleport. So when you're going up against things very squishy like Hanzo or Vala, you can actually kind of, you know, calamity on top of them style, jump on top of them, get that damage. And then that chaos you cause with all your lightning and noise can be enough that people are too busy and they don't deal with your uh, shade business and don't go and punish you for leaving mm -hmm. that in a visible spot. Okay. Gotcha. Final concern. Uh, you're bringing no CC yourself. Have you found your, have you found that to be an issue where you're playing? Are you finding that people on your team? Have you, have you found yourself in a situation without adequate crowd control? I do have durance of hate that I bring later on. And that is a pretty powerful route into a silence at 20. It's, it's very reliant on the tank in that way. And it is not a full-blown Cassia replacement. 
Cassia was just so high damage and so universally good in a low CC meta there that I would first pick her and let the tokens fall where they may. That that was it. Mm. And whatever we got, I was going to be okay with it because all I was there to do was lots and lots of damage. Mephisto, I definitely could use a you know more pure sort of CC to line them up, to slow them down. Uh, if anyone's curious about Mephisto, one of the best things about learning him is that your auto attack range exactly matches your lightning nova. So you sort of take the wheel once you go in. You just sort of, like Zul'jin players, you teleport in, right-click the thing you want to be lightning nova in, and then you let the lightning nova line up with your auto attack, and you can do it pretty easily. So it's not as much wiggling and trying to aim correctly as you might think it is. Mm, as long as you're not too worried that <laughs> letting letting the AI take the wheel for a second is going to get yourself killed. Exactly. Sometimes you get kited out, you take a lot of damage. That's more about like the type of healer you have, like Rhaegar. You probably don't want to be teleporting big style in and then hoping you can do it again in five seconds. Gotcha. That's interesting. I hadn't really thought about him uh, it, through the lens of, of like stand and deliver auto attackers, but that's a very visual tip I think you've just mentioned, which is hilarious because the majority of people listening to this are getting it through audio only. But <laughs> but saying, telling telling me it's okay, just if you're landing auto attacks, you're landing lightning. That's a very relieving piece of, that's a, that's a very relieving factoid. Well, it makes him a lot easier to play. I mean, what? let's, let's see. When did he come out? Because he definitely came out during a busy time, I felt. I was on other projects. He was... Let's see. Was he uh, Was he post-Orphea? Mephisto, dude. Uh, I don't think no, so. No, so. So he was pre. So we did Urel, Deckard, Urel, White Mane, Mephisto, Malganis, Orphea. So he was sort of in the middle of that final, dramatic, speedy release we had until HTC cancel and all the sort of slowdown. Until so Cadence... He, yeah, he got lost in there. Like, I did not have time to learn this hero. Uh, uh, Chromie, Junkrat, they're, they're very much kind of in this zone where I'm just like, I don't have time for you. What are you doing coming out right now? You look fun. I might enjoy you. Uh, you know, was, uh, hairstyle and Junkrat, you know, permitting. I'm not much for the personality. You know, I'm not, not really the Joker type, but really fun kid. I'd love to learn it someday. <laughs> yeah, I... I like the Joker, and I like a lot of the different versions of the Joker, but there's something... Jack, Junkrat is it's just too wacky constantly all the time. I need... It's a feat of animation. I think I need him to be more sadistic. <laughs> as best of us that sounds. He's... He's just... He's too much like a... Like a... I don't know. A nine-year-old is really into fireworks. Hmm. Mm. It, it's that... It's that, you know... It, it's the safeness of it, right? Like you have Diablos and stuff like that, where, you know, the cow's up on the wall and everything's pinned and the cultists are praying. Like, yeah, things are messed up. But Overwatch kind of has this like, yeah, I mean, we're shooting arrows and guns at each other, but surely this is for fun. I, I need I need a, an injection of, of a 16 to 18-year-old mall goth. Mm. That's what I need. That's what's missing from the Joker equation with Junkrat. The, the demon skin might help me out, but it's still the giggling and like the birdie arms when he does the bomb. And there's just a lot that just kind of bothers me about him. Now, I, I, lately, I was trying to do like an Orphea main thing. Ultimately, I'm really struggling to find a first pick main again. And that is fair. I, I, I really respect that. I, I do. You don't want a game where there are obvious first picks because they're good at everything, but it means no one wants to early pick. So if I want to get what I want and to sort of, you know, do a one trick sort of thing or a maining thing, I'm not sure Orpheus 100% not early pick. Mephisto, I'm feeling a little bit, I could get really stupid good, but I'm feeling a little bit of counterplay there. And ultimately what I've landed on is like early pick greatness is Hanzo. Hanzo. That's uh, he's he's awesome. Honestly, I mean, he, he has your he has your haircut. He does. He does. He's got my cowlick. You know, I could really like enhance that. Uh, I, I you know, I, he's a handsome man. He's a handsome man. He's got the archer shirt going on too. He's he's built. He's jumping around. He's low health, but you know, it's it's he's got that Cassia surge of light factor, but it's on his auto attack. He goes, but do and other arrows and other arrows and something called the dragon something because they're all called dragon somethings. And then you're like, oh, oh, excellent. Thank you, Hanzo. I'm now at 10% health. And he's like, no problem. Auto attack, 329 damage. 
it's he's he's amazing. He's, he's an amazing <laughs> hero that I, I want to I you know I want to play all these like awesome things that I never get to see. So I feel a special Orphea Mephisto definitely. I see lots and lots of Hanzos, but you know then there's a kind of like you take the Hanzo from the enemy team factor. You're a better Hanzo than your late pick might be a Hanzo. So there, there is a I, lot there, right? Like if you're see, there's probably a reason you're seeing a lot of them, and if nothing else, you're taking the chance of it away on the enemy side. And he's got so much build diversity. Oh my goodness! Like he's got an amazing auto attack build. If you are on that sort of map or on that sort of uh, team comp. The Scatter Arrow build, the Storm Boat build, they're all really, really good. The only problem is people are tilted by Dragon Strike, which is the, the big double dragon taquito grill thing. Uh, dra <laughs> Dragon's Arrow. I've been joking a long time. Dragon's Arrow, so Dragon Strike. Now, that I don't get confused. Dragon's Arrow is the stun one, and that's what everybody wants to see. Yeah. So that, like, the, there's only one problem with Hanzo, and it's that people just don't like one of his ults. Mm. being picked on the team well you know that's manageable that's that's I, manageable I, I don't know how you compete honestly you could take you could add more and more damage to dragon strike but then you're just saying you have so much cc you might have won anyway so why not just add <laughs> one more uh yeah. dragon's arrow it, it's fat you got to read this text sometime like it really it's so easy and i see a lot of low league hanzos just rip it in melee range like no no you got a 0.5 second stun at that point with 130 damage the further you back up you reach a two second stun two second stun on an assassin and basically triple that damage basically you do you, you triple you actually triple the damage to 390 <laughs> oh so is, is that what you're working on just like landing long distance dragon arrows or are you it sounds like you're tilting your team by taking Dragon Strike. You seem like you have a lot of experience making your team mad. <laughs> I, I really like the zoning. I do like, you know, I see a big choke on something like Battlefield Attorney. I'm like, this is perfect. It It's an odd... I don't I don't think oxymoron is the word. Um, it's a catch-22, perhaps. But there is a saying, and I'm sure you've heard it before, N.A. Arrow. There goes the N.A. Arrow. And, it, and you, you see it kind of hit the rocket boosters and just <laughs> flies. Hits nobody. However, unless it's the first Stitches hook of the game, that, that one we get mad about. But the rest of the Stitches hooks that I miss, we all kind of go, oh, worth a shot. And that's kind of how you need to play with Dragon's Arrow in the late late game. Because you're going to get a two second stun, which is a lot of time for everybody to get really excited and do something about it. So anytime you're watching CCL Storm Division for NGS and a big arrow misses, a lot of these are just fishing. You're just seeing if you can set up a kill, set up something happening because that stun is so dramatically long. Okay. So is your aversion just the fact that it takes you out of your, your sick, hard-hitting auto-attack range to try and get this two-second stun? Oh, a little bit. That, that's, just, that's natural, I think. You've got, your, you've got your bouncy arrows, you've got your storm bolt range, you've got your auto-attack range, and your brain says, no, I need to... I have to be in this zone. I must participate. But it's actually way more valuable with that stun, with that damage, to just back, 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 like beyond chromie range, back, back, back up. And you could literally then maybe do like a ninja assassin sort of thing. Let me look at the name so, of the talent. So, so like uh, Asmodan range, dunking Asmodan range. Exactly, exactly. Then you've got maybe your talent like um, natural agility instantly mounts, mount, mounted archery. So you would hit that stun, and then you jump over a wall, instant mount, and then run in and participate. And over those two seconds, you should be able to get something important done. Gotcha. Okay. His giant killer's nuts, by the way. Have you read that thing? <laughs> no. What What am I looking at? It's called Giant Slayer. Should really, you could, come on, call it Dragon Slayer. Like, you've already, you've already named everything Dragon in the first place. Let's call it Dragon Slayer. Uh, hitting an enemy here with Scatter Arrow and basic attacks... Deal 2% max health as damage. Oh, the, I'm more excited about the basic attacks than I am the scatter arrow, although it's certainly a nice inclusion. Oh, it's a, that's a lot of damage. I mean, you're shooting, yeah. you're shooting a lot of arrows. That's uh, fire, scatter arrow, splits into five arrows. That's 10%. Giant killer. Plus, that you might do on the other side. He's nutty. I, uh, I'll leave that one to you, dude. I uh, I I 
I cannot get past the way he controls. Oh, so the sort, the sort of like charging while moving kind of the business. charging while moving uh, does not compute for me. It never has when I, I get so bummed when he's what I have to pick an A Ram. It's it, kind of like Kill Bill Two. And explain. <laughs> so Cavalier Guest is up there on the hill, you know, massaging his massive beard and throwing it into the wind. Well, I sit there on Hogger, aiming my hand just at the wall, four inches away, and trying to do punches. Hogger was such a massive project in learning wall bouncing that it would be a shame for me not to break out of the underground coffin using anything but wall bouncing now. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I got it. So you're, you're, you're also attracted because of ricochets. Because of all the Your whole I life has been ricochets. Yes, yes. It, actually, am I going to make myself ha- sad here? Kill Bill Volume 2. Uh, what year was that? 2004? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, we were about to graduate. 17 years ago. We were about to graduate high school, dude. Kill Bill is what got me into Quentin Tarantino movies because the first one came out right around the time that I was finally allowed to just watch as many R-rated movies as I wanted. Oh, no. I don't know a good, a good comparison for modern times. I'm too old. You, you're look what you're looking for like a master apprentice reference from a modern yeah, film. Ha- haven't been really any good ones that I can think of. <sighs> I, no. I had to tell. I, I I was telling a story this week about how people would show up to esports events with their own keyboard, and it wouldn't work on the computer because it had a round green thing in the back. <laughs> Uh, I remember, I think it was two computers ago, having to track one of those down because I had some kind of hard crash and I had to manipulate the computer through DOS and the USB drivers wouldn't launch in DOS. And so I had to, like, I went to my parents' uh, garage and went digging through it and found one of those OG uh, keyboards. And I still <laughs> have it just in case that ever comes up again. I'm in. You, you actually have one of those ports on the back of your computer? I don't think this one has it. This okay, was, I okay. want to say, two computers ago. This was probably 10 years ago. Had some kind of, times. yeah, like kernel panic or something. I don't, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't remember. I just remember I had to find uh, the, the circle port. What were those called? I think it's got like a really plain name, like traditional port or something at this this point. Uh, pfft, yeah. Uh, it looks like it's a PS2, PS oh, slash PS2. two. Great games on the PS2. <laughs> yes, yes, but not for PlayStation. It is the old school mouse and keyboard connection. So anyway, sorry. I enjoyed that little trip down a uh, peripheral memory lane. Thank you for that. Absolutely, absolutely. It was, it was a good time. It was a good time. But anyways, we got uh, more stuff to talk about today, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to start uh, with a bit of a, of a Patreon slash content update in regards to Into the Nexus. Some things are we're, we're going to be you're going to be getting more Garrett and Kyle. Yes, you're going to be getting more of us. So I hope that excites you. <laughs> um, we have been having a think about the kind of eye on Activision Blizzard news segment that we've been doing since the Activision Blizzard uh, walkout and lawsuit. Um, We had news last week. We're going to have another segment this week. And so far, everyone's really enjoyed it. But we feel like it's so different from Into the Nexus that it should be kind of its own thing. So at the moment, the way we're, we're slicing this, Kyle... This is more of a Genji thing than a Hanzo. Sorry, I was trying to work it in and I failed. They're both dragon things. It's fine. Yeah, the way that we're slicing this is that we're going to be doing at least one news show, like non-Heroes news show a week, and it's going to be its own upload still here on the Into the Nexus feed. You're going to see it over on the Patreon. You're going to see it on the audio feed, and we're still deciding what day and what time we're going to do that. There's maybe certain weeks where we try and flex to try and report on major news that's a breaks. And then maybe other weeks where we try and stick to a regular schedule. That we're still massaging. Um, but this week will be the last week that we uh, close the show out with Activision Blizzard news. Then we're going to break that news coverage out moving forward. So uh, you'll have your normal 
all heroes chat every week, and they're going to have additional conversation between Kyle and myself on the same feed. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's a tonal shift, and we want to make sure we're all having fun and heroes fun on the show. And when factoring in the time to produce that content, you might look at your time and say, ah, an hour and a half into the next episode, I can't wait. And then the last half hour is not exactly heroes related. And we want to remedy that and give you the heroes goods and continue to be an awesome part of this community. Grow Here's the Storm. Enjoy the upcoming CCL, all that sort of business. Have fun with guests. But I'm taking this very seriously. And I really want to make sure that we are keeping up and reporting on everything that's happening over at Activision Blizzard. It's important stuff. We are seeing other companies react to and have their own internal affairs based on what Blizzard's doing today. Did you see uh, Ubisoft employees spun up a better Ubisoft Twitter a la yes. a better Blizzard? Yes. Yeah. It's all very influential to the entire video game sphere. But I also love Into Nexus. I love talking heroes. So let's have both. Cake and eat it too, perhaps. Yeah. Let yeah. us know what you think. We've heard from a lot of folks that you want more Garrett and Kyle. So you're getting more Garrett and Kyle. So, yeah. And if you like it, you should probably consider checking out our Patreon. So uh, now might be a good time to mention that. If you like our content, if you want to support Kyle and myself, we're the only ones who work on this show. And you can already support us over at patreon.com slash ITN. And uh, we really appreciate everyone that does. Um, it's it, the 2020 was strange for us. Uh, very hard to find sponsor dollars. Sponsor dollars got real strict during COVID. And uh, we got a lot of patrons in the last year. And y'all have, have made up the difference and just... It's been great. So thank you very much for your support, everybody. Um, and we have some new patrons this week to thank. Thank you to Stefan Grift, Adam Stalker, and Jeb Brigman. Thank you very much for signing up. And uh, if you haven't already, I saw some new faces in the Discord. If you're a patron of any level, if you're giving us a dollar or more, you get access to our Discord. You get access to our ad-free version of the podcast feed. It is a custom feed just for you. Um, so make sure you go and claim those 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 goodies. Also, we're, we do monthly game nights where we play Heroes of the Storm with the folks that are supporting us on Patreon. And we have one next Thursday. The, uh, the sign up is live right now over at patreon.com slash ITN. So go and get yourself a slot. Got a link here in the show notes. But you also just go to patreon.com slash ITN and go sign up. Um, and then the final thing is, Kyle, we have a producer slot open. We haven't had a producer slot open in quite some time. So if you're looking to be a producer of the show, be thanked throughout the episode. Check that out over at patreon.com slash ITN. And let's be honest, uh, seriously help us pay some bills. Like It's a big deal. We really appreciate the producer support. Like it, it goes a long way. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. And, uh, and now let's get into this week's Heroes of the Storm news, which goes a little something like this. We're on, boys! <laughs> let's liven up this place! Point me to the stage. Stay a while and listen. And the news is the news. The reign of Zagara continues. <laughs> There's nothing new about that. The reign of Zagara continues. The reign of not being able to play Zagara in a drafted environment continues. The reign of every time I get in, I go, hmm, I could draft and play nothing I want to play, or I could just go quick match and enjoy life. That's Winning's nice. Winning is so nice. The amount of times yesterday people were just like i don't tank and i'm like i listen i know i'm part of the problem i know i don't tank but i expect you to be better than me random stranger on the internet <laughs> there's a certain amount of phil i mean look at look at our patreon signups right now everyone has basically listed themselves as phil for upcoming games geniuses apps <laughs> apps as, as champions and then our final game of night everyone's picked exactly what they want to play again champions you know <laughs> know, know what you want but also you got to be able to, you got to be able to flex a little bit. You got to pay your dues every once in a while. You got to just be like, all right, I will take on this burden and I will stand in that bush. Sometimes Kyle, you need to stand in a bush. That is true, man. Bushes are important. Uh, looking at the win rates here, 
everybody's moving around because Zagara. Zagara is the big gatekeeper of the game right now. She's limiting a lot of heroes down. She's taking win rates from other heroes. However, at her current ban rate, uh, she's not actually playing that much. Uh, popularity, though, is pretty low. So the data we have is very, very skewed just because she's played so few games. If I were to tell you, well, well what actually beats Zagara? Well, as today, you have a 3% better win rate than anybody else. So, you know, 53%. On Murky, your best chance, however, is on Probius and Lost Vikings. Congratulations with the 13 games that that's been played. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. Zagara is not the most banned hero, but top 10. And she wins the games that she gets into quite well. So. Yeah, approach is we're almost at a fifty-eight percent win rate on Zagara at this point in uh, in Storm League on, according to good old Hotslogs .com. Well, um, you can't argue with tradition a lot of the time, and traditional bands. Well, of course, now involving Vala, but Asmodan, Kale Foss, even Gaslo, which is another world, but <laughs> a very banned hero somewhere. Yeah, for some reason. I I'm not seeing Gazlo bands. This surprises me. No, and we have to we have to assume that this is a an artifact of a certain league. In fact, we can probably figure that out here in the background. I'll I'll do a little digging as we talk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kalthos being right above Zagara is just like cool. Yeah, bronze bronze league is a thing. Bronze league constantly banning Kalthos is a thing. Silver league constantly banning Kalthos is a thing. Gold league sometimes banning Kalthos is a thing. So. Yep, it's uh, it's bronze through gold. Really fears the Gazlo Kalthos. I can see that. I can see it. You know, you know, you you run in there, and there's all the turrets going, and and they're auto targeting, and so you gotta go. Ah, oh, I'm dying. <laughs> what what should I do? We're like, leave the area, kill the turrets. No, I'm overwhelmed. I can't possibly <laughs> do this. Of course, we all are also talking about. Anytime we talk about gold and below, we're talking about the highest win rate hero being flat 50%. So the reign of Zagara is 50.9%. Everything else is lower than 50% because that's how it goes. Yeah, it's, uh, she's doing well. She's doing now, well. I'm in a rough place because because the other thing I want to play is Vala. And uh, mm. she's also quite banned. Quite banned. That she is. Well, it, those are the targets, right? So traditionally... At the new cadence of 2021 mid-year, we would be looking at a patch next week. I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be flummoxed. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a delay. After all, things have been on people's minds over there. Yeah, and cofalt has been quiet. He <sighs> has. Cofalt tends to get chatty right before a patch drops. Cofalt even called out himself, saying, "I'm going to get chatty." Right before a patch drops. Um, maybe he's trying to trick us. He was in our only blue comment of the week. And this was on a how do I know how to run a Vala? What build should I do post over on the Reddit? And he commented, don't mind me, just commenting to bait out more replies from Vala players. Which if we were to, <laughs> which if we were to read into, it, maybe he, maybe there is a patch coming. But we don't know how to solve the Vala problem yet, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, to be determined, correct? Exactly. It, it, she has very viable builds. I think in general, throughout most leagues of play, we're looking at multi-shot build being the most popular. But it also brings that bit of lane clear. She's often being run with things like double support. A little twisted, because right now we're starting to see more of a move towards Lucio Uther double support for Vala. So it's more of like a triple frontline Vala with the Uther side. But that pop damage and her auto attack already being so good is leading people down that road with double support, which, you know, is, is a little bit of a, a surprise. Because when you run double support, oftentimes you're saying, we will weather the initial explosion, make them go on cooldown, and then we will win through attrition. We get to have so, a calmer engage. Right. Providing nobody dies. 
But in that sort of system, a auto attack build would reign supreme. Yes. Because you would want to slowly build up your power, not multi-shot and then be on cooldown for a while and then wonder what you're going to do in that time. Yeah. So you, that, that's I, the I, bet you're making. You are, you, are, you are betting your win on fights going longer. So I would expect another nerf to multi-shot when it comes to that department. Mm. As for Zagar, there's been a lot, a lot of ideas flown around. We even had quite a few ideas shared on our previous episode on how we'd like to see her adjusted. We don't know. They're, the the talents that are being picked at the popularity that are being picked at 65% is just too much. In fact, Hydralis Transfusion this week reached the ultimate number of 73% pick rate at level 13. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. That's, uh, I'm assuming, looking at the most recent patch. Hydralis transfusion. Yeah, almost 60% pick rate. Or, sorry, 70, 74% pick rate, almost 60% win rate. Ooh. Some people have suggested a fundamental change to recruit might be in order. I think that's interesting. Oh, uh, uh. Mm. I hate that. <laughs> that is fair that is I, fair I'm, I'm, i hate every word that just came out of your mouth we spent quite a bit of time on zagar in the previous episode i'm not going to dive back into that because honestly i think the the options have been presented we're just curious as to which one they're going to follow and we're hoping that it's not just raw damage because that's what's keeping her in the game right now y yeah what <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. It's just uh it's a tough one. It's a tough one. And two, to tie it into that CC conversation, now that we've ended up back in a meta where people are being held still, those banelings are finding their targets. Yeah, the Hydra list is connected for a long time too. You know, you got that heavier front line locking people down so they're not able to access the Hydra list. Because there's a lot of things you could do. Like you could do a as I mentioned, like a creep change up and put some of her damage based on being on the creep again. You could make something like Pact Instinct more universal, that that's actually just a feature of the Hydralisk and all your Banelings and summons deal more damage when there's a Hydralisk on somebody. That doesn't solve the problem in this current meta when people can't reach the Hydralisk and they're so clogged, they're not going to be able to deal with the creep. Mm. So we'd have the same cigar at the end of the day if we rework the power pie that direction. Yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting. If you, I mean, if you tied it more to creep, it would have a, a higher skill curve, right? Because the amount of damn time cigar ends up off creep is it's pretty common. It depends on the situation you find yourself in. If the opposing team can clear creep easily or not, but it'd be an interesting direction to take it. But I don't know. We'll see. I have a sneaking suspicion we're just going to see some damage numbers tuned. I think that's fair. There are other, like solving this Val equation, maybe even solving a overabundance of stitches. All of these sort of things will likely mean that we're not going to see massive. I don't, I, I'm not saying it's uncreative, but creativity placed into that environment because we're also working on two reworks right now. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I was trying to think, like, who's who's doing okay right now in the damage-wise, but not wildly overperforming. You got, like, Zul'jin, you know, just cresting that 50%. Like, maybe maybe we take, like, a Zul'jin and an Orphea and maybe one other damage dealer and just buff them. So there's more of a, I don't know, more competition going on. But, I don't know, just, it's probably more, why, why, why make it more complicated? Just need to rein in Zagara a bit. So, well... Anyways, uh, I'm also excited. Speaking of uh, uh, callbacks and, and folks writing in, replying to previous episodes, um, back on episode 381, we talked about Kofalt's rules for, for changing things up in Heroes and wanting it to sound exciting but not actually being broken. And you and, and I two did this. Two out of two. Two out of two. We were like, we started, we put a call out and folks wrote in and we, we looked at your suggestions and... Uh, we we decided was it exciting was it broken we gave you either you know zero out of two one out of two or two out of two we're going to do that again today because we've gotten so many replies since uh but before we do that kyle are you ready to talk about how comfy your feet are 
I'm always ready to talk about Bombas Socks. Yeah, man, we got a sponsor today. Bombas Socks is back sponsoring this episode of Into the Nexus, and you can find their lovely, lovely, lovely socks. I've still got a pair of my tie-dye no-shows on the card just for this purpose of showing you. Come on, focus. There it is for the video. Yeah, look at that pattern. Mm. Uh, if you want to check them out, go to bombas.com slash nexus. You'll get 20% 20 off your first purchase. Uh, I love mine. I absolutely love my Bomba socks. I've got no-shows. I've got dress socks. Uh, but it's time, Kyle. I've put on a few pounds. I've been I've been eating my stress. It's time to go working oh. out. I got to work out, oh, man. I, I, say, I see where you're going. I okay. got to work out. And workouts are hard. Extra resistance, double speed. Mm. Here in Florida, hotter than actual hell. One more mile. So many things make working out hard. But my socks shouldn't. And they don't. Bombas has figured it out. Their performance socks are built to be nothing but comfortable and supportive. And I need support. I need support, Kyle, if I'm gonna <laughs> if I'm gonna keep running in the hot weather. I need it. I need it. They're really great though. I, I, they're so freaking comfortable. Um, and if if you're interested in their new performance socks, uh, they have taken all of the amazing innovations that makes Bombas the most comfortable socks you've ever worn, and they've added their special hex tech performance technology these performance stocks are stitched with special moisture wicking yarn and temperature regulating vents that allow cool air to flow in and prevent overheating i would like to get some of this tech on my car that runs quite hot in the summer that'd be nice that'd be nice they also come with a pillow like tab to save you from blisters stay up technology and no that isn't leaning down and pulling them back up because they're still up right and a special arch hugging system. I know you, you've you been very impressed with the arch support in your socks. Yes, yes. I've needed that. But I've also been very excited because we got some nice wood floors. They got grip socks for kids. Ooh. But they call it here on the website, make a comfy masterpiece. I want to point everybody towards the do-it-yourself tie-dye kit. So you can have a little art project with your family. Make your own kids' socks. That sounds fun as hell. I want to do that. Can I just do it for me as an adult without a kid? Can I make my own tie-dye socks? That sounds fun. Yeah, it's great. You should go check them out. And for every pair of Bombas performance socks you buy, they donate a pair to someone in need. They have donated over 45 million pairs so far. So go to bombas.com slash nexus today. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash nexus. And you're going to get 20% off your first order. You're also going to support us here at Into the Nexus in the process. So again, go to bombas.com slash nexus for 20% off. We thank them for their support. And we thank you for supporting the brands that support us here at Into the Nexus. And now, Kyle, let's open up that mailbag and come back to two out of two. Based on Kofot's own rules, it must sound exciting and it must not actually be broken. Excellent. You could rephrase this to say sounds broken but isn't. So we will we be... Start? Yes, we will be assigning one point for sounding exciting and one point for not being broken. So let's start with Gabriel. Who wrote into itmcast at gmail.com? You can too at home. That's right. Audio listeners, I'm pointing, pointing to the camera and saying, You can too. Do it. ITNcast at gmail.com. Patrons, hit us up in the Discord. Gabriel wrote in with some thoughts on how to change up Illidan. So, what Gabriel's Illidan. proposing? One, one, one. Wait, just Illidan in general as one? Well? Yeah, Illidan. Everything about him is exciting. But, but is it broken? <laughs> no, it's not broken. <laughs> So Malfurion would be a zero because he's not exciting and he's not, not broken. No, I'd say Malfurion. It, mm, we got caught in a lot of those sleeps yesterday. You remember that? That was a bit much. Uh, that was there's more going on with the teammates than the Malfurion. It's true, but you know, complete side note here. But outside of our main Zagara Vala kind of camera angle coverage, reactive ballisto spores and Emerald Dream. They, they, those got to be later. Something's got to happen there. It, it's getting weird out there. <laughs> it's getting weird. Well, Gabriel's getting weird with Illidan. Um, Gabriel has suggested give Illidan immolation level one at level zero and maybe substitute it with something evasion focused. The two evasion talents and they even compete with one another. Yes, immolation baseline would make stacking unending hatred quicker but I don't feel like it's too much. Okay, this is definitely exciting. 
This already yeah. gets one. This put, put one on the board. I'm putting one on the board already. It's, it's a weird excitement, right? Because if you haven't played Warcraft 3 and you don't know he's on fire and losing all his man all the time, it doesn't sound terribly thrilling. However, just Illidan being on fire, working on Merc, Merc camps, that's, that's just that, that's the fantasy. I want to be on fire. <laughs> is it the fa- I'm pretty sure the fantasy is like looking cool with a blindfold and flipping around, but uh, nonetheless, the being on fire is certainly cool. It is, um, however, the least popular level one talent pick with 12% popularity on the most recent patch. But Illidan's in a weird spot. Immolation used to be really, really popular with Merc Illidan. And this was during a day, of course, when Mercs were a little more valuable. You could also afford, due to maybe the extreme heights of damage like Vala Greymane 2017, you could afford an Illidan with a bruiser, with a tank, and it wouldn't absolutely destroy what you were making out there. Now Merc camps have been reined in, and Illidan is not that popular at the moment. So immolation, it you know I wouldn't I wouldn't shoot it down just because popularity. I'm, I'm not. I'm really not. I'm, yeah, I'm not shooting it down. I mean, if anything, if we did think we were shooting it down, that would play to us thinking it's not broken. If we baked this in, what I like even more about it is I I forgot what the duration was. There's a duration associated to this, right? Because it's after you use sweeping strikes that immolation is triggered and starts burning in an AOE around you. That duration's four seconds. So this is something we've seen with Bacons in the past that they sometimes they bake it in, but some of the power is stripped out, either some of the damage, some of the range, some of the duration. We could play with the duration. That is a really realistic knob that could get turned tuned down if they thought baking in immolation just as is no adjustments would be a little too strong. Interesting. I'm giving this a two out of two. Yeah, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I think it could also raise the uh, pick rate on basic. Oh, that's actually already as high as his hunter's onslaught. Basic abilities heal for 75% of the damage they deal. I actually don't know off the top of my head if that works in the immolation talent damage. Since it's tied to a basic ability, but it's not basic ability, basically. Sounding a little basic there, Kyle. Yeah, a bit, a bit. I'm not, I'm not sure on that one. It <laughs> would, right. So what, what I'm saying is, what, what I'm basically saying is that we could make a, so the only downside of that, two out of two, love it. The only downside is that it'll make Hunter's Onslaught at four that much more popular than it already is. And it also has the highest win rate. So upping Illidan's ability damage could mean we have to take damage from another area. Mm. However, I fully believe that the only reason you should take Illidan in this current meta is for battered assault because you're noticing a very low CC team that's going to be very clumped. How? <laughs> I mean, the, the idea is that everyone's standing really tight together because they're all super short range. What team accidentally got made that is low CC and fits that that rule? I struggle to think of one. Maybe Gul'dan, Morales. And what other like short range frontliners wouldn't have no CC to contribute? Uh, frontliners with no CC. Um, Zarya. Yeah, Zarya. Well, heroic. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah Gul'dan's got his. We're, we're, we're we don't we're avoiding that. Plus, uh, Illidan can dash out of uh, the heroic, so he, he can break that range by moving. That's true. But That's not a true. huge concern. He should be flipping around. Might be able to dodge the Horrify in the first place. You know, grenade pushes you, but we need one more frontliner that's really light on CC. Oh, uh, Leoric. Leoric could be in there. But jo- I mean, like- j- j- you, I think it's pretty high chance that Johanna would miss the shield against an Illidan. That's true. Shield, yep, yep. The, the little uh, condemn action and the blind isn't that high effectiveness. Yeah, point, course, point and I, clicks I, are, the, are the make or break, right? Like, d- d- taunts. Taunts just ruin, ruin it. So, take him on fire, though. Make yep. Two out of two. Yep. Yep. I like it. I like it. Uh, Carlos wrote in with a ton, an absolute metric ton of suggestions that uh, Carlos wanted us to grade uh, on a two out of two scale. 
And uh, this is fine. Anyone listening, if you want to write in, you have a ton of ideas, you want to let them float, go for it. Just know that we're going to pick certain things to focus on for the sake of time. And so for Carlos, we're deciding to focus on your Dahaka because, Kyle, you agree with Carlos. You think level 16 is a little just not all that exciting to begin with. Oh. Level 16 as a whole on Dahaka, you believe, is 0 out of 2 across all, all talents. I have seen so many Dahakas recently. He is absolutely amazing. A lot of this is due to the prevalence of things like the Symbiosis build. This is also maybe the Enduring Swarm build. Just a Dark Swarm build in general. But Hero Stalker at level 4... Gain one essence each time an enemy is dealt damage by Dark Swarm. That's just an infinite Dahaka. And then you maybe take adaptation on top of that. Dahaka's whole job is just to spin, spin on top of the enemy team. It's disruptive. He's got a big, big body. So he's, CC, he's CCing and body blocking, moving through people all the time, going exactly where he wants. Dahaka is really huge right now in the, in the big leagues. And there are a lot of really fun talents until you get to 16, where you have to choose between 20% drag range, increased movement speed while burrowing, or 20 armor when coming out of a bush. Now, the, those, those are great pieces of a kit. Don't get me wrong. Like, if you're rhythmically going in and out of a bush, I've seen pack leader do huge things. Attack speed on that, not necessarily needed because they're usually just dark swarming right now. Tunneling claws, really fun. But it, it, it's kind of like the Wisp thing. I always come back to the Wisp. I know, but it, it, it's that here's the ability. Here's what it does. And it feels kind of bad. And here's how you make it finally feel good. <laughs> it, it almost feels like this is how the ability should work from the get go. But because I'm dedicating a level 16 pick to it, it still feels bad, even though it makes Burrow feel better. Right. And well, you know, he does get another arm at 10. Dahaka is not in need of buffs and bacons. Let me just lead with that. However, okay. if I was digging underground and I had, I had only one arm, I might struggle in the early game. But when I grow two arms, maybe at level 10, unlocking Tunneling Claws would be a really nice kind oh, of bird to oh, in oh, here. Okay. All right. But we're here to talk about Carlos's suggestions. Yes, That's, fair. Me, That's all well and good, Kyle, but I'm going to slap that uh, yeah. away. Yeah, so, so, so particularly, uh, let's actually lead with uh, Tunneling Claws, because that's the one that's most exciting to me, the one I want the most, even though it kind of bums me out, because it just makes the ability do what I want it to. Okay, all of Carlos's suggestions are additional functionalities on level 16. And at level 16, Tunneling Claws, Carlos suggests additional functionality if Brush Stalker is active when casting Burrow, or is gained while Burrowed, its duration is increased by one second. Hmm. This would play exactly into the lurker strain hope I was having, where I could be sitting in a bush and then dig stealthily into a team fight. That would actually make lurker strain a lot more interesting, too. I like that a lot. It, it, in that way, I think ton I, we still haven't seen the other suggestions, but right now, if that just happened, Tunneling Claws would be always my pick. But I may consider... I may... Hmm. Oh, no. no see, 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 there's Hero Stalker right there. It's the problem is the Lurker Strain. Great, great talent suggestion. I love it, actually. But I'm just going on my own personal journey here. I, I love Lurker Strain. I can't take it because it's up against Hero Stalker, though. What level is this? I'm talking about level four to Haka. Okay. So Lurker Strain does cool stuff emerging from Burrow, Grand Stealth, and Nox enemy heroes back. You know, you explode from the ground, they get knocked up, and they go back, and they get slowed. But that's up against the gain essence every time you Dark Swarm an enemy hero. Maybe this comes... Maybe we do this bacon that Carlos... Or no, sorry, this this additional functionality Carlos is suggesting, and simultaneously buff Lurker Strain. Could be. Could be, You know, uh, actually, this is like a required essence level. There we go. That's it. Because it's up against one who collects. Increase essence collected from minions by 50%. Dark Swarm deals 40% more damage to mercenaries. That's un that's unrelated. That's not related at all. Uh, but <laughs> Lurker's Lane, if I pop people back, give me some essence. Done. We're good. Because all I, I, I... Otherwise, I need the essence. Okay. That'd be interesting. All right. So, Carlos's Tunneling Claw suggestion here where... 
you're going to get to increase the duration of brush stalker if it is active when you cast burrow and you and and tunnel and claws gets to retain it's the hockey can move while burrowed it's definitely it's definitely exciting for me do you think it's broken i don't have a huge dahaka knowledge I don't think it is. No, I think the the requirement for Dahaka to be sitting in a bush while casting it on one of your primary dodge abilities gives it the engage power you might be looking for. Because otherwise, this is your, I'm going to hide underground while big stuff happens. I'm going to dodge the pyroblast kind of moment. Mm, okay. Okay. There's a risk associated with doing this aggression in the first place. Gotcha. Okay. So two out of two. Two out of two on that one. Two out of two. All right. I do want to mention his pack leader suggestion as well. Level 16 pack leader, additional functionality. While the Haka is in a bush and five seconds after leaving, Dark Swarm grants 10 armor to allies for five seconds. I think this is a classic one out of two. Mm. I think this is exciting and I think it's broken. Yeah, I don't, I'm passing around allied armor. You got to be real careful with that stuff. Every engage, every engage out of a bush from the Haka. You're gonna be giving your whole team armor. Oh, I, I think it's, I think that's a, that's too rich for my blood. Now, Carlos has done a very tame amount of armor here at ten percent, but yes, yeah, I mean, but it's ten armor uh, essentially on everyone if they're yeah. if they're team players. And then we get kind of a swarmy team going with it. It, it. it gets weird. I remember the Yorel and Zul days where Yorel would jump on top of Zul to give him armor, and then he became main tank. Things get weird when bruisers give armor. Mm. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, let's bring it home with I'm stuck. I'm stuck's got a lot of notable uh, or a lot of things suggested here. Let's start with Nazebo. See how this goes. I'm stuck suggests that Nazebo uh, cloud of fire bats as a replacement for Fury of the Storm, where Nazebo surrounds himself with a cloud of fire bats, damaging all enemies near him, three to five second duration, with a cooldown. Uh, five times the duration, potentially leading to a piano build Nazebo. Okay, it's flavorful. It's fla- it's very Diablo e. I like that. That Nazebo rarely has a reason to. Well, actually, no, maybe not. Rarely isn't the right word. There's sometimes you're like, I want to poison everything, so you kind of take your toads into the middle of the huge pile just to get the marks done. But the idea of late game Nazebo wanting to run around like a fool is absolutely my Diablo play style. I'm just going to yeah. put on a bunch of passives and go running around as fast as possible. Yeah. I'm not sure this is specific enough to make me excited. It is potentially exciting, but it's like, how, big's the, how big are we talking on the radius on this thing? How much damage is it doing? Does the bat bite the enemy's head and latch on and catch them on fire for dot damage? Like, like what are we doing here? How thematic, how crazy are we getting with our level 20 here? I think that's potential to be cool. Um, as written, I kind of think of it like immolation. I think of it like, oh yeah, it's just like early level damage auras. But if this was actually a noteworthy radius, I could see it potentially being very, very cool. Well, Leoric has a very, very large radius on his, I believe it's called Death Shroud. I might be thinking of uh, Malthia. Let me, let me grab this. Let me grab this here because it's something that can be worth taking. Burning Despair. Deal 40 damage per second to nearby enemies while Drain Hope is active. Gain 40 armor and the damage area is increased by 100%. This thing's giant. It's like the size of a Ring of Frost around Leoric. And it deals a lot, a lot of damage. The, the problem with Nazebo is ultimately Vile Infection at 20. And the idea that you would be pushed out so bad that you haven't completed Vile Infection and you're saying, I'm going to stay here for lane clear, that's just gross. It's just not not a happy place to be. I don't know what we would call those talents exactly, but uh, I think Arthas has one of these with his, uh, with his spell shield. Rarely are you going, spell shield, I'm going to own them all. It's more like I've been trying to kill Thos all game, or Kel'Thuzad, more likely, all game. I hope maybe I can get one team fight where I don't explode. <laughs> I am going to spend an entire talent level praying to God I am countering one member of the enemy team. On a short cooldown, too, with something like 
Kel'Thuzad, right? So Nazebo here, really cool idea. I love the flavor of it that it brings and how Diablo-y it is. I think we got to fix Vile Infection and then your talent here could be interesting, but we then have to lay it against everything else now. And I can't imagine that world. Yeah. I'm still going to say, Infection. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a one and an asterisk. <laughs> I'm going to say, I think it's exciting. I don't think uh, this is specific enough to judge whether it'd be broken or not. I'm going to give it a zero. I don't think it's, it's exciting enough for a 20. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one, again, because, as you mentioned, the vial infection. So, uh, all right. I'm stuck. Also mentions Gray Main. Uh, let's see. Wants to change Insatiable. Let me navigate over to Gray Main real quick. Level is insatiable. Level four. Oh boy, yeah. No one's picking this. this is... No, no. This is your I'm a complete nub talent. I don't I mean that in the best possible way. Like this is a really, <laughs> really good talent when you say, Hi, I'd like to learn Gray Main. And we go, Yes, thank you. You will be out of mana because you're awful. <laughs> and so take it. <laughs> Absolutely really. I'm serious. Like, do take it though. Because when I was learning Gray Main, I needed this. Listen, I needed training wheels when I was learning how to ride a bike. It's fine. Eventually exactly. you take it off. Eventually you take them off. Eventually. Um, so, all right. The uh, what I'm stuck is consider is suggesting as a change to Insatiable is update it to include cooldown reduction to inner be inner beast slash disengage. I, oh. I think that's exciting. I think that's quite exciting. You get the you get the turn into a worgen and, and turn out of a worgen more often that's oh that, that's that's powerful that's really powerful well he put disengage here which is actually different than inner beast so this this might be this might be a typo but uh, inner beast is the ability that causes you to increase your attack speed so oh dark, that's dark right. flight is the name of the ability that takes you into worgen form okay yeah so, that, that seems strange so the, the new build right now, if you're learning Gray Main, is to go Wolfheart, increase the cooldown reduction of basic attacks during Inner Beast by 0.5 seconds to 1. So you basically can screw up your Inner Beast rotation more often. And then you get mana because you're overcasting Inner Beast and you're, you're throwing cocktails that don't matter and stuff like that. So combining those two is a really interesting idea to make like a noob-friendly Gray Main. I, that would just be an interesting research project to see how heroes have maybe lost their noob-friendly builds over time or how noob-friendly heroes have been adjusted over time. Because Lily, when Lily reigns supreme, she reigns supreme because of her ease to play. And that's not exactly healthy either. Yeah. Well, we got to give this a... Uh, what, are we, what are we giving this, man? I think the idea of reducing disengage cooldown is completely overpowered. <laughs> so one out of two? Exciting, probably broken. I think I remove the inner beast, and I'm all for two out of two, actually, because I think it's just it's exciting. It seems broken, but probably isn't. Okay, all right. If it's just disengage, two out of two. Yeah, okay. I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. So, um, all right. There's a lot here with Rhaegar. What one do you want to focus on? Let's pick one. Oh, these are all very, very flavorful. Uh, basically, I'm stuck here once a totem. Totem Shaman, real bad. And this is things like uh, Tidal Waves, uh, Tremor Totem replaces Cleanse, Magma Totems. I, I, I love all this idea. I think that summons in Heroes of the Storm can be a little confusing, as it's not always clear how best to remove them from the battlefield. But it'd be really it'd be, it'd be exciting. It'd be exciting. It would. It's all more confusing considering Junkrat has a summon that can't be interacted with or removed. Um, yep, yep. And then you've got keep... Creep that is like yeah. on the ground and isn't affected by like things that fly through the air. It the, the clarity varies based on you know what kind of summon you're doing right now. And then you've got invisible summons like Chromie's Time Traps. Yeah. However, I... I, I... Go oh. ahead. Okay. I, I do think that <laughs> Rhaegar's aggressive support lunch is being thoroughly eaten by Kyrazim. Uh You're 100% on that one. You're 100%. And, and, and yeah, I think the, the, 
I think being excited by like a totem shaman build on Rhaegar, the mileage really varies from one player to the next. Because like personally, I'm not excited, but totems do not make me excited. They make me excited in Hearthstone, where I can make them into massive murder machines with giving them attack and stuff. But that's not a fantasy I can I can live in Heroes of the Storm. We're not gonna. <laughs> Rhaegar isn't gonna suddenly be Zagara, but calling down totems that chase you down and murder you. As hilarious as that would be. Yeah, they, they've changed quite a bit over the years, right? Because I remember the days of BC, and I think it was called Tomatic Recall, where you could kind of set up your little base and you have all your little buffs, and then you could do this sort of combo in order to move those around or reset them. The idea that Rhaegar could do his sort of kit in that way is really fun. I like that idea a lot, that I would maybe start with my very, very base totem, uh, my, my slowing totem. Is that Earth Grasp? I believe, dude. I don't know. I'm, I'm grabbing it here. I'm grabbing it here. Uh, go web. Earthbind. 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 So we'd start with a Earthbind totem, but then as you pick totems, you start to build out that four set. And no matter what build you go, you will only ever reach four. But required totem levels would kind of affect this. So as you go, your Earthbind totem is just your base level. It's actually just that tomatic recall or your totem placement which is more what shamans do nowadays i believe it's been a while it's been a while uh bfa i think was the last time uh but you you basically press one button and all your sort of pre-selected totems drop in a square and in, in fours around you and the idea that you would build up to that number of totems and complete your tomatic build is a really really fresh idea more fresh mm -hmm. than chain heal which you, you could keep but what I'm sad is seeing sweet, action-packed Rhaegar do what he does nowadays, which is butt bite, and then go, okay, <laughs> I did it, everybody. Run, 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 run away. And let's, this baby heel will maybe, maybe and Kyrazim just goes, and there's like, da -da 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 -da, you, and now well, I don't exist because I'm kicking you. And then back to the uh, super aggression. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well. I think I'm biased here because be, being a totem shaman just doesn't excite me at all. Um, and 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 I, I hope you find this funny. I'm stuck because I find this very funny in my mind. Um, it's supposed to be exciting, not upsetting, which I think is exactly what would happen if you were like, oh, "Cleanse is gone and it's been re replaced with a totem." <laughs> Anyone, any any heroes of the storm enthusiast reading that cleanse has been replaced with anything is just gonna they're gonna panic immediately. No. Chad is informing me that buff totems have been gone for many, many years, which is just the saddest thing on earth. Oh my god! Well, so we're not cool. we're not here to have a conversation about the current state of shaman in World of Warcraft. I actually, I, well, I don't know, but I'm, I'm I'm sad. Like I remember Wind Fury totems, like the idea that you were sharing those outrageous buffs with people in Kyrazine. That was awesome. That was, those were awesome. I don't care if they were a hassle. I Chad they were is being contrary. I thought they were great. Contrary chat. I don't like shamans, period. Sorry. I'm just, I'm not, I'm the wrong person here. If, I'm the wrong ultimately, person. Here. It's often the problem with hybrids when you get to, you know, mm. purity of play. Oh yeah, but I love paladins. So what, 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 what's my problem? Well, that's, that's more like a, I'm a hybrid because I take care of myself and do everything too well. Yeah, it's a hybrid, <laughs> but... Wait, what? You, okay. You got me there. Are, you what, 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 what are you, is this the, the end of BC patch? What are you talking about? You know, well, that's what I know best, to be fair. But I, Resto, uh, rest, they were both restoration, right? The the Druids, they were great too. So it's not, it's we're, not you're perfect. right. They were, I never thought about that. They were both They were Resto. amazing. Yep. Oh, Katie, my now, my now wife, oh, she just loved running around as a tree. It's favorite thing in the world. Favorite thing in the world. All right. Well, um, it's hard to grade. We kind of talked about all of the Rhaegar suggestions in one go, but well, this is this is basically a rework they pose to make the shaman that they see in their head. Yeah, I think I think I think this would be exciting to people that aren't me. <laughs> I, I I will say I think that uh, a level twenty talent that he suggests here, reincarnation, is great. Uh, revives on the spot with sixty five percent health and mana. That. That's beautiful. The, the fun of the Shaman Resurrect was one that you... Well, I, I won't say this is fun because you had to res everybody else in the entire raid. That's not fun. But in a more 
tactical or dramatic situation, Gruel would wipe every or a, a couple people, including you, and then you'd wait through the rage, whatever, and then you'd pop up right when you were needed. And the idea of a more controlled Uther resurrect at 20 would be really, really fun on the more aggressive Rhaegar version we're building here. Yeah, it's 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 a lot to take in. I I, I I'm I definitely think this would be exciting. Uh, it's a lot to take in in terms of real me making a call if it would be busted or not. So I think this is one attitude for me. Mm. I'll, I'll give two attitude on uh, reincarnation, but the rest of it is just too mm. big to fathom. Yeah, reincarnation is very cool. It would be very very cool. So, well, thank you everybody for writing in with your suggestions of how you would like to see. Heroes changed up and uh, and challenging us to give it a two out of two scale, whether it sounds exciting and if we think it is not broken. If you have future suggestions, write in itncast at gmail.com. If you're a patron, drop us a message in the Patreon Discord. All right, Kyle, are you ready to bring it home by talking about uh, some major news coming out of Blizzard this week? Let's do Eye on Blizzard.